We are. We are. We are NBC. We are. We are the storytellers of Mason High School. We are. We are. We are. We are. We are. We are the best student-run broadcast. We are. We are fans excited about bringing you Comet Sports news. We are. We are. We are. We are by the students, for the students. We are. We are. We are your primetime home room. We are. We are NBC. Welcome to this edition of NBC News. In today's broadcast, our reporters are bringing you the stories as their try begins. When you're in high school, it's easy to get used to an everyday routine. Wake up at 6, get into class by 7.15, and count down five bells a day till 2.15. Corinne Hazen has a story of how Mason's breaking that repetition. With this year coming to an end and students planning their next year of high school, administration has put into place some changes that may take students by surprise. No, I think the, the biggest changes are going to be, um, we're not going to be using Naviance anymore. So we will be meeting with everyone in groups again. Um, we'll be going over the whole process. There are also videos online that everyone can kind of look at, see the process, see kind of some of the changes. Um, but the big thing is going to be, we'll be using instead of um, Naviance, we'll be using course selector sheets. So every student will be filling out their list of classes on there, talking with their teachers, getting kind of some recommendations for some classes and then they'll be turning them back into their home rooms. Then we will be entering them as counselors. Administrators promise another big change coming fall 2014 with the switch from trimesters to semesters. The amount of time that will be spent in class will be equivalent to what we're doing now because currently with the trimesters a, a try is equivalent to a semester. So typically your classes will be a full year or semesters before. The changes that will occur will be for any course that you might be taking that's three trimesters long. And those are some of your AP courses, um, some of our electives, um, if you're involved in the, the bank or the store or music classes. Um, but you'll find it'll be still spread out for an entire school year. With all these new changes hitting the halls of Mason High School, guidance counselors and administrators hope these new processes will positively impact current and future students of MHS. I'm Karen Hazen, NBC News. Some may be excited about new change coming, but others couldn't disagree more. Here's Gabe Dubois with the story. For the past 16 years, Mason has run on a trimester schedule. But with recent financial troubles, the school board has decided in fall of 2014 Mason will be switching to a traditional semester schedule. Instead of the year being broken up into three trimesters, five bells apiece, there will be two semesters with possibly seven bells apiece. It is more costly um, to operate a trimester schedule. Um, we have been, um, been pretty creative over the last couple years when we've made several um, reductions in teaching positions at the high school. And, but we are losing the very um, the very foundation for all students um, in the trimester schedule, so it's not becoming what it was originally meant to be. Chris Ennis has been teaching in Mason since 1990 and helped make the decision to switch to trimesters 16 years ago, and he is not thrilled about switching back. There are a lot of schools that are on the semester system that do very, very well. Um, I think Mason's unique in that we do have the trimester system and one of the big unique things about it is the fact that uh, I really believe the trimester system allows the educational potential of all students to, to reach their own maximum. When you go to a semester schedule, I kind of refer to it as a uh, assembly line mass production education. You're getting kids in, you're getting them out in 50 or 55 minutes or so, and we don't have the time to, to spend with the students that we would have right now. Despite the concerns, Mason High School's principal, Mindy McCarty-Stewart, feels that switching to semesters will not hurt the school's ability to educate its students. In a semester, trimester, anything, we could certainly um, do a disservice and make anything an assembly line approach, but um, I would dare say that I don't believe that our students or staff would allow that to occur because I could, you could be a teacher and you could have an infinite amount of time 
what you do with that time, you either make it feel like an assembly line or you make it in an innovative classroom where there's relevant learning going on. The school cannot financially support a trimester schedule for much longer in its current state. But Mr. Ennis doesn't think switching to semesters is the best solution. Without a doubt, semesters is a, is a cheaper system to go. Uh, my problem is, is I don't think we've really researched all avenues that we can, we can look at creatively to come up with more money. Um, I know that the administration really doesn't want to do a school levy, but you know sometimes you can cut too deeply, and and when you start cutting off arms, then that's not, not that's not the kind of cut you want to make. A levy is inevitable in our future. It's going to need to happen. Uh, a levy still um, to ask for an amount in a levy that um, would help us continue to sustain and move forward. Um, still is never going to reinstate what we've already lost. So, do the pros of semesters outweigh the cons? Right now, that answer is unclear. But with the plan to switch in 2014, it won't be for long. I'm Gay Dubois, NBC News. Mason is ranked 94th best place to live by Money Magazine, but it wasn't always that way. Lucas Hakes has the story of how our cozy hometown is now a fast-paced city. Mason is growing. Whether we like it or not, this is not the same town it was decades ago. What was once a humble farming community has grown into the largest city in all of Warren County. Recently, within the last decade or so, large corporations have been trying to converge on the popularity Mason has been gaining. But thankfully, there are still a few establishments that are trying to preserve the old Mason feel of community, courtesy, and family values. I met up with Todd Hudson, cool guy owner of Wildflower Cafe, to hear how he's securing small town values in a rapidly growing city. I am the owner of this business, and I am ultimately responsible for anything that my employees do, and I'm also responsible for anything that happens with my food. And so, you know, for us, for us to follow this model that we do, um, you know, that, that is the American dream, is, is finding a product that, that, you know, you're proud of, that you stand behind, because that's your business, and that's your future, and that's your children's college, and that's, you know, that's our life, and, and not every country has that freedom. While Hudson may be holding it down, as it were, what of the businesses that have been in Mason for decades? I asked local proprietors what they thought of Mason's changes over the years. We've learned if you don't change, as the times change, you're not going to survive. I hate <laughs> the hustle and bustle and um, sometimes I feel like we've lost some of our sense of community. A lot of them don't even know the barber shops here so you know we're trying to get that addressed. We're getting ready to send some flyers out and get people to come in and get their hair cut. While what Mason used to be may seem like yesterday, one thing is for certain. You can't change change. I'm Lucas Hakes. NBC News. The students in Honors Anatomy and Physiology class got to experience being doctor for a day. Here's Namisha Rikasia with the story. You know how they say the best kind of learning is hands-on? Well, the students in Honors Anatomy and Physiology not only get to learn hands-on, but hands-in. The dissection benefits the curriculum by reinforcing all the concepts. It's one thing for me to say, okay, you know, here is the right ventricle, here is the right atrium, but it's another thing for them to actually physically touch it and put their hands on it and take their fingers and put them through the pulmonary trunk and put it through the aorta and actually see how it all works, actually physically seeing that. Students who are wanting to go into the medical field find the dissection part of the curriculum beneficial. The heart dissection, like, benefits me because, like, I learned about different parts of the heart and the class as a whole, I learned about different parts of the body and how they function. So that helps me because I want to go into the medical field. So I think it's an interesting class to take if you're interested in that. I think it helps a lot in the classroom just to be able to see it in the, the actual form that it is. Um, it's easier for the teacher to tell you what it looks like, but to discover it yourself it helps you remember it a little bit better. I think it gives you a better understanding of what an actual like human body feels like and what it you know actually looks like. On the other side, there are some students who have the desire to go into the medical field, but no desire to get their hands dirty. Um, I thought it was really gross, especially how she described like 
sticking our fingers into the veins and through like the ventricles and the atriums. I thought that was really gross and was not excited to do it. I particularly don't like dissection because I think it's gross and it doesn't interest me and for me the worst part is the smell. It's whether you find it beneficial or repulsive, dissection at MHS cuts to the core of the curriculum. I'm Namisha Rakesha, NBC News.